Okay, so here's the uh, the last thing I had to work on with this this is car. Uh, this particular tool did 600 and 679 cubic inches of removal. You can see the edges are, are worn pretty well here on the inside. I don't know how well it's going to focus. So it uh, I took it out. I didn't think it had anything left in it. It looked like it was it was hurting. It sounded. Still sounded pretty decent, still got a sharp tip on it. It just ended up wearing off a lot of the coating, so it was getting some sparks. And it's, it's kind of serrated here at the moment. But she did well. Um, a few extra things I added to it. Let me grab my marker. Okay, so first of all, had to add another airline. You see, I got one here in front and right there, and then one there in back. So that way when it's going around the block, it always has air going in one direction. Which will hit it on this side and this side, and then the other one hits it on this side and the back. So, you definitely got to put a lot of air into it, and it doesn't like coolant. Again, I can't stress that enough. I actually washed it while it was cutting around the outside. Um, a drop came from up here. And when it came down, it hit the tools like washing your child fall from the couch. It's just like, pink, and gone. Another thing is, is this hole right here caused me a lot of issues I wasn't paying attention to. So when I was going across it initially, I was just doing the full arc. Going back, going across, and it's coming back across it, almost like the hole didn't exist. So I had to reprogram it so that way I knew the hole was there, and it started taking this little edge piece out. Obviously the little flappy occurs. Take the flappy out while it's running. And then uh, it goes in and it starts to do one of these curved things and rounds this edge off. So I think, I'm guessing it takes the impact out of the tool from going to a hard edge to a hard edge, and then to a hard edge to a hard edge. So it starts to go in here, and then you can hear it hitting it, and it smooths out this edge. It actually forms a radius like that eventually, and then it just keeps going farther and farther in. So this gets cut away, and you're not wasting too much of your tool path um, on that particular portion. So it sped up my program a little bit. Um, but there again, with the coolant, obviously a big no-no. But this, uh, I was actually extremely impressed with the fact that this thing did seven full pieces of this. This is a, this is a, uh, a little over six inch wide part. You can see it's a, a Chinese marker going back and forth. Um, very, very impressive. It needs a lot of air, as you can tell. It needs to be clean. It needs to be precise. Uh, I, have, I had the honor of having this car Rick in here one time, and he, he told me that uh, if you're going to try to drive it like a Ferrari, it needs to be as precise as a Ferrari. And none, none, that's the absolute truth. This thing needs to be extremely precise and clean going together. And every bit of it, even including the sideways, or the, uh, the radial stock needs to be relatively accurate. I did test the top part of the material. In the previous video, I said that the scale seems to be jacking the tool up a little bit. So I uh, took it over to the rock ball tester. This is about 20 to 25 rock ball C. And that scale that was on the top was uh, 62 rock ball C back and forth between 58 and 62 when I had it tested. So that, that stuff on the top is extremely hard and it does do some damage to it. But as you can see from my tool pad, this uh, she did very well. So all in all, it cost me uh, way less than water jet to have this thing profiled and it goes way faster. And it's definitely a good tool.